Despite the look on my face, I am starting this video out very stressed because the last two DIYs I did that were supposed to be for last week went horribly, horribly wrong and I had to scrap the videos entirely and I had no videos last week and now this is the last week of July and I have a lot more videos that I need to really put up. So I'm worried about this one going very wrong too. A couple of days ago I put a poll on Twitter asking you guys cactus or hot air balloon with no other context because context is overrated and you guys overwhelmingly voted for cactus so today we are, surprise surprise, making a cactus hide. In order to make this we're gonna need a couple of things. First of all you're gonna need some corrugated cardboard. Yes it's actually a cardboard build rather than a wood one. I'm sorry I know I do way too many wood builds and even though most of them can be recreated with cardboard I should occasionally at least do some simple cardboard ones as well. You're going to need a balloon. I wish I hadn't done that. That really hurt. You're gonna need some delicious homemade flour glue. That's one part water to one part flour mixed together very well until the flour dissolves. You need a bit of non-toxic water soluble PVA glue. You're also gonna need some pet safe paints. Now for that you can use soy paint, you can use food coloring, or as I recently found out you can also use a non-toxic water soluble children's craft paint. That didn't come out my mouth properly. Children's craft paint. Although and this is just a bit of personal advice here you can take it or leave it I would advise airing on the side of caution if you have an excessive chewer if you know for a fact that the pet you're giving this to is going to rip it to shreds and probably ingest some of it I would say to opt for soy paint or food coloring just for peace of mind. And you're also going to need some kind of sharp cutting tools. Possibly scissors, possibly craft knives, it's up to you. Step number one, you want to blow up your balloon to be about the same size as your hand. It doesn't need to be any bigger than that. You can make it smaller though if you prefer. And we'll be using this as the frame for our paper mache cactus. So I need a little pot to sit it in. Here is my little pot. There we go. And let's also switch to a more convenient camera angle. So here is our balloon in our pot. Here we have the flower glue and we also have a little bit of tissue. This is just ordinary toilet tissue, nothing special. And what you're going to do, let's just move these to the sides so you can see. I'm just going to rip the tissue into tiny little strips like this. And you can rip them even smaller if you want to. And then we're just going to paste these onto the balloon going from the top down to the bottom, like this. Very easy, I'm sure we all did this in school. Layering those pieces up slightly, they overlap just a little bit. And pasting on the flower glue, or flicking it all over the table, you can do that too. That's also an option. And every so often you might want to give your flower glue a little mix, because the flower does settle in the bottom, so you want to mix that background to make sure that this glue is nice and strong when it sets. Now it is really important when you're using flower glue that you do let it dry fully before moving on to any of the next steps like painting because if you don't let it dry fully there is a risk of it molding. As long as it dries fully though that's not going to be a problem. So I think you've got the idea. You want to cover the entire balloon in the paper mache leaving just a small gap around the knot of the balloon so we can actually remove the balloon later on and then you want to place this in a warm dry area to dry. I'm living out my childhood dream of being one of those children's art show presenters. Here's one I made earlier. This is the one I made a couple of days ago. The balloon has actually decided to shrink itself but the normal next step would be to deflate the balloon you can just cut the end off with a, a pair of scissors and then okay that's not gonna it's gonna need some help snip into the end to let the air out and then just pull it out and you're left with your little ball of paper. So that's your cactus done aside from the painting but now we're going to move on to the cactus pot. As you've probably guessed we're going to be making the pot from the cardboard so this is going to be the main part of the pot and this is going to be the little outer lip that you see on terracotta pots. Now the pot itself is going to be the actual hideaway this is where your hamster will go inside to nest so we do need to make a little doorway and we're going to cut it right in the center and you need to make sure it is big enough for whichever hamster species you are making this for. So there we go, it's kind of rough looking but that's just fine because we can smooth it over later with some paper mache and tissue if we want to, totally optional. So now we're going to take the thin strip of card and we're going to glue that to the top here using our non-toxic PVA glue. We're going to pop a little bit of glue whoop, just all along there and then we just glue that onto the top here and leave that to dry. So once that's dry you want to flip 
your cardboard over and we're going to start bending the cardboard. So now we should be able to take the cardboard and manipulate it into a circle. Once you're happy with the shape of your pot, you can just glue the two ends together. So we're going to get a bit of PVA glue here. We're going to glue them together. Whoops. And with the magic of pegs, we shall hold the cardboard together while it dries. Two hours later, we are back. I have had to change into a vest because I was absolutely dying in that t-shirt. It is far too hot to be wearing it but you gotta plug the merch somehow. The plant pot has now completely dried into a nice circular shape and it's time to pop the lid on. So in order to do that, we need another piece of cardboard and we're going to use the inside, where is my pencil? We're going to use the inside of the plant pot to draw around on our sheet of cardboard and draw out a perfect circle that will fit inside. As you can probably guess, I have already done this because it saves time. So I drew around a circle where I drew a circle on a piece of cardboard that would be the exact right size to fit inside this pot and I've cut it out and now all we need to do is just put it in there. It's simple and straightforward, we just take the circle and we pop it in the top and just kind of squeeze it in, it should be a nice tight fit you don't want it moving anywhere. Okay, that didn't work. I know you fit, I tested you. Now you want to make sure that this circle is sitting a few millimeters down from the top of the pot. You don't want it sitting straight on top because this is supposed to be the soil. And we're going to seal this into place with a little bit of glue around the outside. My hand is really shaky. I think it might be close to dinner time. We'll do this on the top and we'll also do this on the bottom. And that will stop the circle from falling into the pot and squishing your little hamster. Once again, we do need to leave that to dry fully before we move on to the painting step, but there's one little thing I want to do that is totally optional. You don't have to do this part. I will pop a timestamp on screen if you want to skip it and go straight to the painting, but I'm going to add a small layer of paper mache over the top of this just to help tidy up these rough edges where the corrugated card is showing and also to tidy up the rough patch on the door. So once again, we're going to pull out the flower glue, which needs mixing because it's been sat down there for a couple of hours. And we're going to start layering up the tissue. So this does take time. So if you want to make this really quickly, I would advise skipping this step. This is only if you are really certain that uh, this is going to last a long time. Because honestly, if you do think your hamster is going to just rip it to shreds, uh, there's, there's probably no point to doing this. So I'm just going to keep wrapping the tissue over these raw edges of the cardboard to give me a nice, clean, fresh slate for painting on later. I'm going to paint that onto the inside as well. And I'm probably only going to do about two layers because this isn't for the purpose of making it stronger, so I don't need to do too many layers of tissue. Which means it won't take as long to dry, which is a bonus. Can we have a moment for ASMR? There's so many people who hate ASMR and like I don't like food ASMR. I don't like the sound of humans chewing on food. It's I no, just you know, mukbangs and stuff, please get them away from me. But there are so many sounds that sound wonderful in ASMR, and I don't get why some people are just against all ASMR of all forms. I don't understand. I mean honestly, come on, who didn't love the peanut crunching ASMR we did in December? Or, or John crunching on a carrot that I did a couple of weeks ago. Do you know how many dislikes that video has? Like the ratio of it, I think it was like 95% likes, which sounds great, but my videos normally average about 98 to 99% likes. So that really kind of highlights just how many people did not like it from my audience. Luckily though, since it still was a 95% like ratio, uh, and I personally enjoy ASMR, you will see other videos like that in the future. Sorry if you hate them. Not everyone does, I certainly don't, so, you know. It's okay to not enjoy every single video a channel posts because it's not always meant for you as an individual. And that's all right, it's okay. I think that's why I also got so many dislikes on um, my video of me setting up the cage behind me, the Petri dish. I did that setup video 
as a raw sound one, which I loved. I watched so many videos like that of setting up mostly aquatic gardens because I'm really interested in having my own aquatic garden. Um, and so many of them I've watched, they've been done with raw sound and it's so soothing and relaxing and I love it so much and the dislike ratio was crazy. <laughs> but once again, I love those types of videos too much to really let that bother me and I definitely intend to do more raw sound videos in the future because for me, they're really relaxing and if you don't like them, that's fine. You can just, you know, watch a different video. That's, that's an option, that's cool. I really should do one of those DIY Q&A videos that I've done in the past where I'm answering your questions as I'm building something. That'd be fun. I'm not sure when I'm gonna have the time to do that though. Because quite frankly, my schedule is a mess at the minute. I have no idea why, but it is, and I'm struggling to manage it. <laughs> Hence why there are less videos right now. But we're getting there. We are, we are getting back to some form of normality on this channel. It's just gonna take some time. So I think now I'm gonna jump ahead to when this is finished and ready to be painted because while I'm sure some of you are enjoying the chatty video, uh, as I just mentioned, my like to dislike ratios have been a bit squiffy lately because of me doing things different in my videos. So uh, let, let's not tempt fate on that one again. <laughs> so we've got cactus and we have pot. The pot is now nice and dry. I zapped it in my oven for 20 minutes to speed up the process because otherwise uh, we would be here for many, many many, many, many more hours. And aside from smelling a little bit like cookies, it's perfectly fine. So finally, we can paint these pieces. Last thing we need to do before we glue all the parts together is to make the spines for the cactus. So, I'm gonna take a couple of pieces of tissue, you're gonna tear them in half, and you're gonna dip them into some flower glue, so they're nice and wet, and then you're going to form them into a little cone shape. It's gonna be a little fiddly, but you will get there, I can promise you that. Just keep squidging the tissue around until you have your little spike. There we go. And you're going to need to make quite a few of these. It's going to take a little bit of time, but once you're done, you can set them aside, leave them to dry completely, and then paint them. The color that you paint them is entirely up to you. I, of course, already have mine done over here, and I have painted mine black, but you can paint them anything you want. You can paint them black, white, gray, brown, or you can go for a more funky color, like neon orange or hot pink. So final roll call, we have spikes, we have pot, and we have cactus. It is time to glue all these guys together and make the finished hide, which is hopefully gonna look adorable. Back to our PVA glue, we're going to first glue the cactus to the pot, and I have cut away a little more around the knot hole here, just to neaten it up and make it easier to glue. Pop a little bit of glue along there, and then we're gonna glue this in the center of the pot. And then we're gonna glue on all the spikes individually. Just stick them wherever you want on your cactus. And it'll hopefully actually start looking like a cactus instead of just a, a green blob. To make this easier for myself, I'm gonna squeeze the glue out onto a tray. Whoop! Whoops. 
And then we're gonna dip, dip, and stick. Oh, it's looking so cute. I love it. I love it so much. And to think I was originally planning on just drawing the spikes on. This is so much better. This is why projects take me so flippin' long to do, because the initial project is always so much simpler, and then as I go along I start having new ideas for ways to make it better. And it just adds more time to everything. Oh my goodness, it is so much cuter than I thought it was gonna be. I love this little house, it's adorable. Of course, you will have to wait a little bit for the glue to dry fully, but once it has, it is ready to go straight into your hamster's enclosure or into their playpen or to use for a photo shoot, whatever you want. I'm now gonna have to be extremely patient waiting for Nitrogen to wake up so that we can do a photo shoot with this. I am so excited to see what he thinks of it. In the meantime though, if you enjoyed this tutorial, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up. You can also share the video with your friends and you can subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye bye!